Hi, thanks for joining me today to hear about the methods Idaho Department of Fish and Game has used over the past four years to estimate the state's wolf population. Many of the more traditional methods IDFG uses to estimate big game numbers rely on aerial surveys or the capture and marking of animals. Starting in 2019, we began field testing new methods that use arrays of trail cameras to estimate several aspects of large animal populations, including how many there are, which I'll call abundance from here on out. Surveys conducted on one specific day in one specific area can be affected by the day's weather conditions and animal responses to the survey itself. Trail cameras are advantageous because they allow biologists to observe wildlife across large areas of space and over long periods of time with little disturbance. Scientists have developed a number of new ways to use data from trail cam pictures to estimate animal abundance. The method we've used, utilized in Idaho in recent years to estimate the state's wolf population is called space to event. The space to event model is a new method of estimating abundance of unmarked animals and it works on the idea that the rarer something is, the more space you'll have to survey before you find it. For example, let's say you're glassing a hillside for mule deer with your spotting scope. If there aren't very many deer on the hillside, you'd expect to have to glass a lot of the hillside before you find a deer. In this example, it took six spotting scope view sheds to find a deer. If we knew how many square feet you were viewing with each spotting scope view shed, we could produce an estimate of mule deer density or the number of deer per square foot on this hillside. Conversely, if there were lots of deer on the hillside, you'd expect to find one without viewing much of the hillside. In this example, it only took two view sheds of the spotting scope to find a deer. So, how does this idea work with cameras? We place cameras like these randomly across a landscape we want to estimate abundance for. Each camera is programmed to take a picture both when its motion sensor is triggered and at a specific time interval throughout the day. Notice in the bottom right, this set of pictures was taken at 8 a.m. We randomly mix up the order in which we look through the cameras and then sequentially look through the pictures taken at that time step until we detect the animal we're looking for. In this example, it takes five camera view sheds for us to detect an elk. Since we measure the area of each camera's view shed when we're deploying it, we can then use simple addition to determine the total amount of space we looked at before we found the elk. We then take another set of pictures at the next time step. Notice the time in the bottom right is 10 minutes later. We randomly mix up the camera order again, so we're not always starting with the same camera, and sequentially count view sheds again until the species is detected. This time it takes three view sheds for us to detect an elk. We then repeat this process across hundreds of cameras and thousands of time steps, which produces thousands of separate estimates of the amount of space between animals on the landscape. We then use the es those estimates and the mathematics described in this peer-reviewed publication to estimate both the average density of animals per camera and the total abundance of the species of interest in the study area. We use pictures taken at specific time intervals and motion trigger pictures that fall within predefined time intervals in our estimates. As you might suspect, this results in millions of pictures, many of which do not contain an animal, either because there was not one there during the time interval, or the motion trigger may have been activated by wind-blown vegetation or snow. To help us screen out the blanks, we use artificial intelligence software to identify pictures that contain animals. IDFG staff then review these photos and categorize the species. We tested how the space to event model worked for estimating wolf abundance in three smaller study areas of Idaho during 2016 to 2018. We compared the camera estimates to estimates generated from a more traditional method of estimating local wolf abundance. 
That method involves the collection and analysis of DNA from sites used by wolves in the summer. Estimates between the two methods were very similar, and the results of that study were also recently published. Next, I'll describe how we scaled up this method to generate a statewide estimate of wolf abundance, but first I want to clarify a couple terms. We deploy two different camera grids across Idaho to estimate wolves. One to estimate wolf occupancy, and the other to estimate wolf abundance. Occupancy is a measure of distribution, or how widespread wolves are on the landscape. And as we've been discussing, abundance is an estimate of how many there are. Since 2016, we've deployed a grid of over 200 cameras per year to estimate wolf occupancy across suitable wolf habitat in the state. This occupancy grid divides most of the state into cells that are about the size of an average wolf pack territory. This grid helps us understand the yearly distribution of wolves, including which parts of the state are regularly occupied by wolves, colored here in dark orange, and which parts are only rarely occupied by wolves, colored here in yellow. The results of this occupancy monitoring has shown that wolves have remained widely distributed in Idaho with no major changes in occupancy since 2016. This occupancy modeling also allows us to focus our abundance monitoring in the primary areas occupied by wolves. We need a higher number of wolf detections to estimate abundance, therefore we put clusters of abundance cameras in randomly selected cells within the occupied portion of the state. These abundance cameras are deployed at random locations within summer wolf habitat and are aimed at a potential wolf travel corridor at that location, like a trail or lightly used road. We use the resulting average wolf density from the space to event model and the acreage of predicted summer wolf habitat within the occupied portion of the state to then produce the statewide abundance estimate. On average during 2019 through 2022, we deployed about 530 abundance cameras that took about 10 million photos each year. The abundance estimates generated to date suggested a fairly stable population of about 1,550 wolves statewide during the summers of 2019 through 2021, with a slightly lower estimate of about 1,340 wolves in summer of 2022. Abundance estimation with cameras is an evolving field of wildlife research, and Idaho's statewide wolf abundance estimates are the only estimates of their kind. IDFG continues to actively work with our partners to improve the population monitoring methods we have for wolves. Thank you for joining me to hear about the methods IDFG uses to estimate Idaho's wolf population. See you later.